Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'll be painting a small 6 by 6 inch still life of an orange. As I get started here, you'll see that I don't start with an underdrawing, and that's simply because of the size of the painting. If it were a larger painting, I'd do a more elaborate underdrawing just to make sure that I have everything in the right place and at the right scale. You'll see this method on many of my other videos on this channel if you'd like to check that out. But for paintings like this, I just jump right in with paint that's thin with a bit of mineral spirits to start things off. And as I carry on here, I'm starting to make some important value and color decisions. I've added three distinct values in the peel area to get a sense of what it's going to look like. And I've started on the inner part of the orange only to realize that I'm going to need to add some background for it to look light enough. As I start to add the background, I get a much better sense of the space and whether or not the values I put in the orange are already correct. I always tell my students to get more general information for every section of the painting before they get into any detailed work. It's possible to work from one spot and finish as you go, but it takes a lot of value and color control to get it right. So put a thin layer of all the colors and values of every section of the painting before you get too into the details. This will give you a good idea of how everything should look in the final painting, or where you should be changing things as you go forward. And just as another tip, if it doesn't look the way you want it to at this point, you should make the changes now before you get too deep into the painting. From here I just continue to finish off the first layer of paint and work towards making things more detailed. As you can see I've also started to add thicker paint, especially in the lighter areas. This is because I usually want my lightest lights to be a little bit thicker at least but also because the thickness of the paint in this case should also act as some of the detail. In the next layer I'll continue working on top and add some thicker paint as well as some glaze uh, to make some more interesting effects with color and with uh, the texture of the paint. At this point in the process, I've let the painting dry completely, which took a few days because of the thickness of the paint in the initial layer, and now I'm oiling it in. I do this with a makeup sponge and some oleo gel. Oleo gel is a product made by Rublev, which I love using for oiling in and glazing. You'll notice at the beginning of the clip that the painting has lightened and gone a bit dry and chalky looking, especially in the darker colors. Oiling in allows me to see the colors and values more accurately as I start working on the next layer of paint, and on top of that, it ensures the next layer of paint will be slightly fattier than the previous layer, because every brush stroke from here on out will have some extra oil content. This second layer will be the last one for this small painting, so I want to make sure I've gotten everything right. For this painting, I essentially repainted the entire orange making everything just a little more accurate and adding on the final details. I usually end up using a couple techniques. One is glazing, where the layer I put on top is more transparent, so the layer underneath has some influence on how the layer on top will look. And I'll use scumbling as well, when I drag some slightly thicker, drier paint over the top of the previous layer to get some texture and interesting impasto. You'll see me add a light and cool white to the pith, more roundness to the orange peel by darkening on the bottom uh, as it moves into the shadow. 
I add another thin layer to the background, making sure to keep it nice and transparent. And I'll also use this time to refine my edges, which means that if I want some areas to have harder edges that increase focus in one area, or softer edges which decrease focus, I'll make those more or less pronounced at this stage as well. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video and the commentary, please let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, and see you next week.